even the holographic one they'll yeah. be about 14 1443 because 1443 that's when Skander Beck returned <laughs> back to Albania to defend so nice. I think you know play I'm playing off that limited edition holographic so that will be it you will never ever see again uh, any holographic when it comes to those type of variations you are tuning in to the Cigar Guys podcast, where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host, Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother, Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. We are here with a special guest today who is going to introduce us to another Albanian-themed product. This is actually very exciting for us. Super excited. All right, so introduce yourself, my friend. Yeah, uh, my, my name is Arbrathan. I'm, I'm Albanian. As I'm president, I was born in Albania and lived there until 12 years old. So I've been residing in the United States uh, since 12. I'm 35. Let's do the math here. That's what, 23 years. Uh, and uh, just excited to talk about you know, uh, my product for you know uh, playing cards, which is mm -hmm. fully custom playing cards that resonates with our homeland and some of our uh, uh, national hero, which is probably the most iconic hero of Albania, mm -hmm. uh, Skander Beck. So it's themed around him and the culture uh, of Albania, the, uh, the traditional clothing. Um, and it's, it's purely custom from inside out, from the talk box or type case uh, to the cards themselves, the illustrations between the kings, queens, jacks, uh, aces, uh, the jokers as well. Uh, so yeah, and we got a campaign coming, uh, uh, technically, <laughs> by the time this comes out, so it, it should be a, a few days out, so February 2nd, awesome. so when this comes out, that should be running at that time. Yeah, I mean, the product is beautiful, can you hear me guys? Yeah. The product yeah. is beautiful, I mean, when we got the cards in person, uh, we were absolutely blown away by it, like, the attention to detail, it's just like, you know, it's bicycle cards, how much, you know, work they put in. How much detail they put into those cards i mean zach's got them right there in front of him there very yeah, so very nice i have a pack right here and yeah just i mean playing with them you could tell the quality of the cards they're fantastic they slide perfectly you know just just as you'd expect a playing card set um <laughs> to play with but yeah i mean the more i look at them to be honest with you the more like i just fall in love like the attention to detail that you put in these like uh, playing, I was about to say cigars. These playing cards, um, it's fantastic. I mean, yeah, you could yeah, tell. You could you. tell that you put a lot of time into it. And even in the case, I was really shocked. You know, opening up the case, uh, the little details you put in there. Uh, Skenderbeg on the front looks fantastic. Of course, Albanian eagles. You put. You know, it's like it's a very traditional set that I think you know, really portrays the culture that we have. You know what I mean? I mean, I wasn't born there like you were, uh, but my family's from Kosovo. And, you know, that's oh, kind of, awesome. yeah, that's kind of why we started, you know, Besa was to just get our culture out there because I've always felt that, you know, the history in Eastern Bloc, especially with Albania and Kosovo, is, uh, uh, it gets lost. You know, it doesn't get taught that much here. And, you know, we're trying to keep that culture alive here, especially with a lot more of Albanians uh, presiding here and immigrating here and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, these cards are just fantastic. Yeah, a hundred percent. I appreciate for you know for seeing the details. It's it's been a project probably for about three years in the making, in a sense. You know, oh, wow. between uh, the idea. Uh, I'm a graphic designer by trade, mm -hmm. right? And this is something that that. Uh, that I'm committed to doing something I'm doing on the side. I mean, I don't want to call it on the side because it's not just a side thing, it's another full-time job. <laughs> yeah. So I started it, you know, three years ago between research, uh, which also allowed me to kind of dive into, you know, history of Albania. I generally know who Skander Beck is and what he did and all that. But I think by doing the research allowed me to get a little more knowledge into our, you know, 
500, 600 years ago history, you know, as you know, where we are today is Albania, you know, small country and and that Kosovo hopefully one day gets to be called, gets to be rather <laughs> part of Albania. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah. Recognize, you know, them as, as one of us, which they are, but it's just on the map that they're not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, as you can see here, I have a, so there, on the campaign, you'll see technically three versions. You see the standard editions. So you got the blue, blue and silver, which, I, you know, uh, in my thinking was to represent Kosovo in that color. So that's mm. why I chose red as Albania <laughs> and Kosovo. As part of resemblance, I love it. I love it. Uh, and I mean, as all of them, I, I call them standard. The top case is fully uh, foiled. There is no printing involved. In the, you know, on this is two two different foilings. On the outside, one foil. On the inside, with and then in, embossing, which is the paper that you raise the paper to kind of add that feeling when you touch. Uh, so it's yeah, it's 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 been it's finally coming uh, to you know coming alive. Hopefully, it does. You know, I, uh, get funded by Kickstarter. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the fundraising uh, uh, platform. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kickstarter. Yeah. So, yeah. So hopefully, you know, it does come alive. You know, with what I'll be asking, uh, and I don't see why not. It's the community of, of of cards. Actually, it's growing tremendously. It's it's insane. I think prediction by 2030, 2040, between the board games and the card games, that's supposed to be around. 40 billion, 30 billion dollar business. Hmm. So since the pandemic, everything pandemic somehow just that makes put sense, everything yeah. up, yeah, up there. So it is a, it's a big community, bigger than I thought. Uh, you, you know, um, growing yeah. up, I did get to play cards with the family. Uh, there are a couple of games we call them pass. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. Yeah. Or it's called another one, Spati, just some Albanian uh, <laughs> uh, card games. So I think I've always had love for art in general. So I, you know, I just uh, when it comes to Albania, I find myself often uh, representing Albania amongst non-Albanians. In a sense, I'm always talking about Albania, or I'm sounding about non-Albanian people. I, I, and more I think... shy and more shy when I'm around Albanian people. <laughs> I know, yeah, it, it's the same way with us. You know, we talk about Albanians all the time, and then. You know, we get around Albanians and we just stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure what that is. So I've always had a love for it, in a sense. You know, uh, to your point that you brought up earlier, uh, not a lot of people. Now we're getting a little bit of attraction and recognition where Albania is amongst, I think, artists. There are like Dua Lipa and uh, uh, Gosh, I mean, some older ones, Jim Belushi, and people who mm -hmm. had no idea those guys were. Yeah, well, even Drake know. did that music video with the Albanian right. jacket. So now everyone's like, oh, Albanians, you know, Drake uh, right. supports Albanians. Right. Which, I mean, it, it would have been know. fantastic in that music video if they were using your cards and then they're smoking our cigar. I think that would have tied everything beautifully <laughs> oh <my> together. <laughs> they, they, they should have reached out. You know, I know, yeah. That, hey, <laughs> no, I agree, I agree. Hey, you know, eventually we'll get them to reshoot it and then, you know, both of us will be on there, okay? <laughs> so, um, obviously... Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Albanian history, that's kind of a given. You're Albanian, you wanted to, you know, show off your culture and, you know, Albanian pride. So, uh, why playing cards? Are you, you know, a big playing card guy or was it just kind of something that you figured it might work out? What was kind of like the whole idea behind starting the playing card section of it? I mean, playing cards. Uh, so, I'm, I'm a Yu Gi Oh collector. That, if mm. you guys know, it's like Pokemon. Okay, uh, in yeah. Sense, right? so it, it involves cards. And I think. Traditionally, as I mentioned before, you know, when I was younger, uh, we used to play with family. We used to play cards uh, before, and I think, I, I, again, I, I always want to find ways, how do I represent Albania, right? So cards kind of, sh you know, playing with them generally, right, between the, the Yu-Gi-Oh, the kind of fantasy world, and the reality of cards, and again, getting into collecting cards from other companies that they design, the custom cards. I was like, oh, I got to do something. And because I have, there are existing Albanian cards, but tilt as of today, I don't think anybody's proving me that's at this level mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of, you know, being fully custom, the details that are involved. Uh, yeah. Again, it's about three years in the making between research to the production side of it, uh, uh, which is you know, a lot of challenges. And I've learned a lot in terms of this process. I'm sure, yeah. So I think and I just love art. And one, what's another way for me to present to, you know, you have cards on the table and when you're looking at it, it's it's representing a culture, even to those who might just buy the card for the sake of how, you know, to them might be uh, uh, beautiful just the way it looks, right? I mean, I buy cards that 
I have no connection to it. It's just the visual aspect of it for me is very important, and I love it. So for us, for some, it might be because they understand it's Albania. For others, it might be because it's just beautiful art, mm -hmm. ultimately in the end. So it's a little bit for everybody. Yeah, and kind of like you said, yeah. I did do like a brief search on Albanian playing cards, and like the first ones that came up were mainly just like a red card with the Albanian eagle on it. <laughs> you know, not as detailed as you know your cards. Obviously, not as much effort was put into the other ones. So I think you know, kind of like you said, as far as I have seen. These are the most detailed, the most custom, like you said, playing cards that represent Albanian history. I mean, and everyone, you know, from Albania knows Skanderbeg, they know who he is. So right, it's just, right. a, it's a great representation of tradition and culture from Albania. I think it's beautiful. Right, right. And it's finally mentioned that I had, once I was promoting into the, some Facebook for Albanian forum pages, there was a guy, I believe, from, from England somewhere. He saw, he's like, so, hey man, I think you stole you stole somebody's idea. And I'm like, great. I mean, it's, I go like, we got we got some, you know, we got some traction in terms of people thinking I stole somebody. I was like, do you mind, do you mind sharing what that is? So at least I know, right? Um, and he shares it to me, and I'm like, all right. I said, you know, I said, I understand. You know, you you have your thoughts and opinions. I said the only thing that's that's similar here, I say, is the fact that both are cards mm -hmm. and they're based in Albania. Between what you're showing me and what I and what I have, they don't come remotely close, right? Right. Yeah. So there was somebody that that one I guess says you know they might be a fan of this company somewhere out in England, but yeah. that still hasn't been you know I think in my opinion to that point. We've had uh, a, a similar issue. I mean, when we started the base of cigar, uh, we didn't realize that there was you know we we thought we were the very first ones, and it turns out there was another company that did it before us. Uh, and now there's like two more that came after us. Uh, but when it comes to the actual quality of the cigar, uh, we've talked to different people that had tried all of them. And mm -hmm. it seems like, you know, ours is the highest quality when it comes to the product and everything like that. So, but I mean, at the end of the day, like, you can't necessarily say like, oh, you copied someone's idea because it's not number one identical. But two, I mean, right. Right. how many different playing versions of playing cards are there? representing let's say like venezuela or spain or other countries so when it comes to a country like that it's hard to for anyone to say like oh you know i own the trademark to that because it represents this country right right no my i agree i mean i i love it if somebody called me out in a sense right because uh, i to your point you know based on the research that i did i think the more i promote this the more things with the algorithm of instagram and facebook the more they kind of throw things at you they are similar to this to the card world right. the more you see and prior to that i even typed in some and just didn't really see anything and then these guys say hey there's a company i think you stole their idea i'm like all right great let's start a discussion <laughs> and it wasn't the case right uh, but again somebody can do something similar right to what i have done i might do it better yeah exactly I and, think, and i mean and that's what the world's about right you know we buy things that we like better you know, and you have a better product than, you know, let's just say these other people. And just like, you know, I would say we have a better cigar than some of the other ones. Um, and, you know, that's what it's about. You could have two soaps that you go buy at the, you know, at the store, but you buy Dove because you like Dove better, you know, or you buy the organic right. stuff, you know. So it's like, yeah, you could, people could, and people are always going to do it. Oh, you copy this. This guy had this idea 10 years ago. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, but he never did anything with it. Right. And know? the competition <laughs> is what helps breed the better products anyway. Exactly. It pushes, you know, I would say it pushes us, you know, um, as like inventors, I guess, you know, of a product uh, to make sure that the stuff that we put out is to the best of our capabilities. You know what I mean? Exactly. Right. Right. Did you say you were a yes. graphic designer by trade? Yeah, I'm a graphic designer by trade. So, like, what, what kind of tools do you use to design these? Like Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Photoshop, or? Uh, so, my part involved in this is this. Uh, I started with the research between you know uh, the graphics in terms of the way I envision things to be, and taking pieces of actual. Let's say if you look at the the the, the folk the clothing on this, right? I kind of you yeah. know did the research and say, hey, I'm this part of our culture, how do I implement this? And I did rough sketches. So the process is finding those pieces, put them together the way I, I'm visualizing them to be combined together. Uh, did rough sketches and essentially at the very end of it, I had to hire, hire an illustrator that had a specific style uh, mm. to what you currently see here, 
right? Okay, yeah. So I am you know, uh, I'm the uh, designer, right? And then, you know, in, in a design world, there is never an I in a sense, right? So uh, you know, if I'm able to illustrate, I mean, if I'm able to do graphic design, if I'm able to do web design, then, I mean, I will be at the top of the world. <laughs> Yeah, it's just not yeah. the way things work in general. I mean, I have a concept, I have an idea. Uh, so I did the, the rough sketches, I did the, the research, and then I told the guy, here you go, this is exactly what I want. Here, here's the element, here's this rough sketch. Here's a shot possibly of something I might have found online mm -hmm. that I wanted to be in, in, uh, incorporated into the, the illustration. So ultimately, in the end, the artist with that style put everything together for me. I created, directed, you know, all, the, all those things. So I wore the hats minus the illustration. All the hats minus the illustration. So and as like... a graphic designer, to answer your question, we use, depending on what it is, if you're doing ads, if you're doing, I don't know, brochures, if you're doing books, if you're doing other things that use InDesign, because InDesign is a tool of laying out editorial, right, between bringing photography, copy. Illustration is more like this, Adobe Illustrator. And then Photoshop is more about photo manipulating. So it depends or, or, or things of, uh, I don't know, it could be uh, things that we post for social media, you know, a small, yeah. small app. I and mean, you can do all of this, in any of this technically. Yeah. But if you want to go about it the right way, in a sense, you kind of follow, you know, each tool for what it's supposed to do. Yeah, I know, I know like if I'm using any of the Adobe products, I just use whatever one like I'm most comfortable with. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, oh, you're supposed you to use Photoshop for this, but then it's like, yeah, but Illustrator, I feel like, does better for me, you know? Yeah. So I'm just going to use Illustrator. Exactly. But Exactly. And, and again, every I work for, for different companies. You know, I work for Sprint, you know, the creative team. And, you know, mm. currently I'm working for a Mark's company uh, as well. And every company, in a way, has their tools. They, yeah. they focus, some focus a lot on uh, Adobe InDesign. Some focus a lot on Adobe Illustrator for them to build files so it all varies on the culture of the company and the way the, the creative team goes about it yeah i mean you as like a business owner i'd say that's really that's smart i mean it's great of you to understand that in the beginning be like hey i could try developing you know i have the idea of what i want i have the rough sketches um but to understand that like i can't do the exact design that i want so let me bring someone else in um i mean that's like that's great to understand in the beginning, you know, this way right. you don't get trapped in a struggle of you're like, oh, it's almost there, but it's not quite what I want. Should I just put it out? Should I not? You know, I mean, Elon Musk, you know, Elon Musk isn't the best engineer in the world, but he hires some of the best engineers right. in the right. world. You know what I mean? Because he understands that he can't do it, but he could find people that, that mm -hmm. can. Yeah. And I mean, yes. you know, I think that puts us into like, uh, like the struggles of starting a business, right? You know, so... Like, I, I did have a question written down, like, what were, I know you had Kickstarter for your funding and stuff, but what were some of, the, like, the biggest struggles that you faced when starting this up? I know you did research for years, so was it just the design work or the research behind it all? <clears throat> Excuse uh, me. Or... I think, yeah, I, th I thought that's a good question, really good question. Uh, I would say coming to, like, even at this very moment right now, there's still some changes being made, and I have one week left, right? I think the, the toughest one was uh, finding a vendor and kind of, kind of doing the, the, the finance side of it, okay. making sure that it makes sense, right? Um, like you know, me hiring an illustrator, me you know having to pay for, for prototypes, right? It's not cheap. Yeah. Uh, uh, it can get expensive. So I think figuring out, I had somebody that was helping me out. That didn't go anywhere because I don't think he understood he didn't have the connections on the card card uh, card world, meaning he can find a company that can produce a box, right? But what happens when you just find a company that can produce a box in general, they their charges are very expensive as opposed to a company that focuses a lot on just designing the top box. Yeah, yeah. They are set up, the system is set up for that, which means the cost is cheaper. Yeah. So I think, it, you know, uh, it took me about a year to figure that part out. Right. I mean, I, I have, have knowledge of production. I have knowledge in terms of how things to be set up. But, you know, being a one man show for now, at least uh, the struggle is figuring out that side of, of production. And that took a while. And I just had to take a break for a little bit. I was like, and then eventually, all right, 
do some more digging, do my some research, and just I hit somebody. Just maybe I got lucky. Uh, you know, I was heading the right direction, and just person happened to pop, and you, you that's brought, how the conversation. You brought up uh, making more changes. Like, how many variations or iterations did it take? So to, uh... a, uh, well, there's another when you when the campaign there'll be another version of this. There'll be a a third option. Okay. Uh, it's or an an add on. So there's terms they use when it comes to Kickstarter. You know, everybody can order a single deck, two times the deck. So the more let's say let's say a set the cheaper they get. So uh, a deck will start at $16 if somebody wants to order one deck, right? Either this or this. And then as you go higher, they get slightly cheaper, right? If you mm -hmm. order a set, the deck. So eventually you got the bigger box, which is uh, uh, two sets of 12, so it's 24 decks, right? And it gets probably around $12 a deck, okay. right? Usually, uh, often people buy those because they get together with family and be like, hey, I also want one. It's like, that's where I'm together. It's cheaper for us to buy a whole set of decks than individually uh, buy our own, which is more expensive. So it'll be a third version, which will be fully holographic. Nice. Ooh. I mean, it'll be a, a white box. All the artwork will be holographic. And then the interior, the back of the card, will also be holographic, right? Not just print, yeah. with gilded edges, which also will be holographic. Okay. Uh, those will go for 40 because now I'm, be I'm also being charged yeah, in yeah. terms of the, the whole set for them to do, the whole gilded, the backside, you know, the plates for them to reset the plates. Uh, just having plates could, I think it's around... Seven hundred dollars just to have the metal plates for uh, hot, yeah. hot, hot, hot stamping on yeah. the things for the foil, and then you have versions which will, will be they call them limited edition with with numbers. So that means that out of five hundred, uh, only five hundred people will have access to this, and I will not print them ever again in that style in that color. Okay. Um, so. So limited edition. Is, say again. So like limited edition cards. Right, they'll be limited. So even the holographic one, they'll yeah. be about 14, 1,443 because 1,443, that's when Scanner Beck returned <laughs> back to Albania to defend. So nice. I think, you know, play, I'm playing off that limited edition holographic. So that will be it. You will never, ever see again uh, any holographic when it comes to those type of variations. I can maybe do a combination of holographic and I'm just going to throw something else in there. Gold, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But all holographic, you'll never see again. So that's why they're limited edition or... Another one will be 500 where the gilded version only with the with the same tug box, but there will be 500 of those versions. Okay. Are you sure? So the... Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um... No, I was going to say there will be collectors who, like, I need to have that. Right? Yeah, People exactly. Who, like, yeah. I need to have it because Prime Shuffle will not print them again. Like me. Yeah. I know what I'm going to spend <laughs> all my tax return money on. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to say, you kind of shared. Um, a little bit about some feedback you got and it was you know the guy saying oh i think you copied someone else but what about um you know what has been some memorable positive feedback that you've received um when showing these cards whether on instagram or to other albanians in person what's like something that stuck out to you that maybe motivated you um and made you feel you know really good about what you were doing uh, i think uh, uh, socially, uh, online, social media wise, right? Because I did, I also went to an Albanian event recently for the Albanian Independence Day. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, kind of set up booth there a little bit uh, right outside the entrance with, with the banner and you know, about the size that you guys have there. Uh, in person, I think it was a little off. Uh, uh, people, I'm not sure what, uh, it felt <laughs> like they avoided it for the most part for some reason. But when it comes to social media, there's a lot of love amongst the Albanian yeah. community, I would say, right? I'll say Maybe. real quick, real quick, we kind of um, faced the same thing with certain events that we've gone yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you saw me give a look to Alex, but when you, when you started talking, when, okay. yeah, when you started, yeah, when you started saying that, yeah, uh, yeah we, definitely, we got the same thing. It was like the whole vibe of it was was different. They're like, oh, you know, that's cool, but then like they would just walk away or they just wouldn't look at us, and I'm like, okay, uh. <laughs> I, that's exactly what what it was. I think. I kind of I, I kind of read the audience, and I think the audience, when it comes to generally, I would say eighty percent of the people that are there, they're more of the older generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I think kind of you know uh, reading the audience, like okay, fair enough, you understand it, why you're not really you know uh, uh, getting any reaction from people. Usually the the younger ones on their thirties, mm -hmm. 
stories I would say as well are responsive to it. But anything outside of that, it's very like, eh, like then it's not their thing and I get it. I yeah. understand it. So I think the target audience, you know, I think I missed it. And maybe if I have the product next time this happens, because I will have a physical product, kind of kind of laying it out, taking over and be like, ooh, is this is somebody actually thought this was a, uh, he's like, is this like a, uh, you send cigarettes? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, like, the first not event. Not a bad idea, but no. <laughs> <laughs> the first Albanian themed event that we went to, it was, uh, I would say, generally younger people, um, like maybe, you know, 40 and under, and they were very, you know, well responsive to it. Uh, we did really well at that event. Uh, but then the second Albanian event that we went to, it was more of the older crowd, I would say. So, kind of like you said, they seemed more like they didn't really care as much. They weren't really like, you know, connecting with it. Right. So that right, could be right. part of the reason why it's like, you know, are they the younger generation? Are they older? Or maybe it's, you know, what the type of Albanians, so to say, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, I think the younger ones are more open to more newer, I think, uh, ex exploring newer things that didn't really exist back then. I think the older folks, uh, if you just give them, you know, probably the, the traditional clothing, they might be into it more physically mm -hmm. have for them to have that or having just a pure Albanian flag. They're all about that. When it comes to, let's say, you know, Albanian cigars or uh, Albanian decks, it's really it's new in terms of the modern days, so to speak. Uh, for them, it's kind of like, oh, okay, right? It's not, you know, they're not very responsive to it. Yeah. So. And that, and, yeah, it's been, that's been a support to answer your question. It's been, it's been, the support has been great. We like, can't wait for this. Some of them, like, hey, when is the coming? I don't, I don't like waiting. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they want it right now. Yeah. <laughs> they want it right now. But, you know, I have for three, four months, I had to do a promotion because otherwise it's not going to, it's not going to be able to fund it. That's for sure. Right, right. So, yeah, I mean, it's been that. And then you got the coin as well. I mean, this is also another fully custom coin. This will be as we call them stretch goals. So if I say, hey, if we reach 100% of the stretch goal, Everybody that orders at least two decks gets a free, fully custom. Oh, coin. Okay. Yeah, the coin is beautiful too. I mean, yeah, uh, it's it's. It, I hope it's real gold. <laughs> it's not. It's not real gold. I, 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 I'll go out of business before even starting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one day we can uh, make like a one very day. limited run. <laughs> and and I, and I and I you know I think it's it's awesome. Like even looking at your cigars when you know when I saw your cigars because often I see Albanian brands. You know, let's say energy drinks, you know, or things I often see in TV. You know, not to put them down because obviously they're very successful. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's uh, that has to do with, with uh, I'm sure, the money they have in order to push their product everywhere they can. But the creative side of it, you don't see it, right? So when you look at like one of you guys' product, a cigar, there's a, there is there is certainly thought behind it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just let me find a clip art of Skander Back and I just. <laughs> Slap it in there, for instance, right? Uh, yeah. Which we've seen uh, that. So <laughs> we've seen that with right. uh, a certain cigar brand, where that's well, all they did. Know, so. Just on Google, yeah. they search up Skenderbeg, put a, a picture on it, and they're like, "Oh, Albanian cigar." And then you try their cigars, yeah. and it's just, you know, terrible. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I think I think us. I think we're doing some justice to to the culture in terms of representing it the right way. If you ask me, if it's one way of putting it. And same with the cigars. I mean, there it is aesthetically, it's pleasing, right? When you look at it, it feels it feels legit. Like I even you guys sent me some few cigars when I went to Albania event. I shared it with you know a, a couple of people actually. Oh, I appreciate so it. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, for sure. Because I'm not sure if you follow on Instagram. There's this Albanian girl Eva. Uh, they do a lot of with her husband. She does a lot of. Uh, um, reenactment of funny stuff between husband and wife and all those things. Oh like that. yeah, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then they have like at least a big combination between Instagram, I think, and probably Facebook, and you know, like a million followers. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I shared it. I shared it with her husband. With he's part of the works with them because I wanted to represent. You know, for me, I think it's awesome that I can hold the products and be like, "Hey, guys, here we go. You gotta try this." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it was nice. I, I shared, you know, a couple of cigars with them, uh, you know, uh, and I do smoke cigars on special occasions. I'm not a cigar smoker in general, but yeah. to have something like this, I have, I'm going to have a few friends coming over tomorrow. Uh, they're not Albanian, so <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be popping this. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I appreciate just the support, to, man. Yeah. Just to be like, to be like, like, oh, Arbor, Albanian, of course, of course, you got to show us Albanian stuff. <laughs> 
people that know me, I, I've known it for years, and uh, so no, anywhere I can, I do, I do represent any, any anything that I find creative uh, when it comes to it. And again, back to the point of some energy drinks that are Albanian, and I'm like, yeah, they there's just nothing, they, al- they, there's nothing Albanian about this. Literally, yeah. nothing Albanian about an eagle. Yeah, that's Fine. it. They just put the eagle. Yeah, oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. They just put the eagle, and then that's it. They're like, oh, it's an Albanian but energy drink. <laughs> all right. I mean, they're successful. Yeah, they, yeah. They, have, they have the means to push their product, and good for them. I mean, I can't hate for that. <laughs> right. So for them, though, it's like they're solely banking on the fact that it's like, hey, it's Albanian product, you know, buy it. Uh, instead of putting exactly. a little bit more effort into it and saying, like, you know, oh, here's exactly. the beautiful art, here's the history of Skanderbeg and all that. I mean, we can learn from them in terms of, you know, how do they become successful. But of course, when it yeah. comes to the creative side of it, you know, I can't. Uh, yes. I think it needs some work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's not too much behind it. Yeah, I mean, even even with us, you know, from where we first started, you know, we wanted, you know, just like our box, for example, you know, we wanted a simple box. We wanted it to be like old school. But um, like to this day, you know, we added like this whole cover, you know, we designed it ourselves and then uh, we looked into now we're looking into redesigning the entire box just to put more detail behind it, uh, you know, and kind of just like show the Albanian fashion because, you know, you go to Kosovo, you go to Albania, you know, the detail that they have on like buildings and, you know, artwork and stuff over there. It's beautiful. You know, there's a reason why Albania was the number one, you know, uh, like go to travel spot on TripAdvisor, right? You know, it has all this hidden history, has all this beautiful architecture, has you know this attention to detail, um, and which I think you know you portray beautifully in this. And uh, I feel like we have some catch up work to do to you, uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, no, I you don't. I don't think you do. I think you guys are in in terms of your industry. You're doing it. If if you ask my opinion, yeah. you, you know, I mean, card world is different, completely different. Cigar world completely different, and I think you guys keep doing what you're doing, and you can only get better at it, right? Same with me. I can only learn. I can only get better at it. Ultimately, in the end, like even this, like it reminds me of like Albanian lick. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a, yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, it's it's awesome. There is a lot of thought behind it, so it's not you're not just doing it for the sake of selling cigars. You yeah. are, I think, you're representing the right way. Yeah, I mean, even uh, like like that sticker that the seal that that's what we use to seal our boxes now. Um, that wasn't originally on there. Uh, Alex actually, you know, woke up at two o'clock in the morning and like thought of the idea, and he's like, "I got to design it right now," you know. And then I woke up in the morning with all these different iterations <laughs> with you know with Albania, with Kosovo, with you know just everything. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my god, Alex, this is awesome. We need them right now. So he's like, "Yeah, I already that's- ordered some." <laughs> <laughs> that's when those happen man you sometimes sleeping sometimes you're doing something else you gotta drop and be like all right i gotta put this on paper yeah and, and yeah. even as a, on a, as a graphic designer i think even the most obvious thoughts you want to put them down the most ridiculous ideas you want to put them down just so you can cross out and be like all right i know this isn't going to work out but at least you have it on paper visually because it's one thing to have it in mind it's one thing sometimes to put it down you know i can my mind is fantasizing about things and as soon as i put it on paper I'm like really arbor yeah, uh, you know, yeah, this is pretty bad, dude. This is enough. <laughs> hey, it happens, and that's part of the design process. You know, you, yeah, like you, you said it best. You got to throw everything down on paper, and then you could knock it off and be like, nah, that's that's not the one. You know? 100 percent, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, maybe in the future, we can collaborate, not just in terms of promoting a product, but somehow, kind of, you know, put this together. Who knows? Uh, and I think it's it's a way. I think I think it. To represent and push the product in a, in a good way, right? Uh, when you combine something that the cards and cigars do to go, go together, because it's a side of often people smoke and play poker, mm-hmm. right? People drink and play poker, or or vice versa, just drink and smoke a cigar, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, let, I mean to call back earlier, what I mean, the beginning of this episode, um, you're like during COVID, a lot of people start playing cards. Uh, same thing we noticed with cigars during COVID, a lot of people started smoking cigars uh, because hookah was too much to deal with. They didn't want to smoke cigarettes. So like they kind of got into the cigar industry and, you know, we've noticed a lot more of Albanians. Um, they don't want to smoke cigarettes all the time, you know, like, like their parents realistically, cause like my dad smoked, my uncle smoked, you know, so they're transitioning to cigars just cause it's, you don't inhale cigars, right? So 
it's easier on your lungs. You, you still get a lot of flavor from it. Uh, it's a nice way to just sit down and relax with a drink while you're playing poker. You know, uh, so I think hand in hand, I, I think they do go great hand in hand. You know, it's just and especially the growth from COVID to now, uh, like, I think they're both growing exponentially. Yeah. Well, I mean, too, you see any mob movie, cards, cigars, <laughs> Albanians. Sometimes. Sometimes Albanians, yeah. <laughs> they got they, they got to make another now that uh, was it was it taken? Yeah, yeah, yeah. taken. <laughs> with, with their guys, with their guys' product. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I don't know if that'd be the best publicity, but you know, any publicity is good publicity. <laughs> there you go. Any publicity. I mean, listen. Often, you know, hopefully, it gets a change in the future. But we're not always portrayed when it comes to movies as the best yeah the best right it's always the mob it's always the you know we, we take revenge like like eye for an eye tooth for a tooth type of situations but you know it's i've had experiences where somebody's talked to me and as soon as i tell them i'll be there they'll be like oh <laughs> it's, it's, I, and you know from one mind i was like hey you just you just enjoy the conversation i, I told you i'm albanian i think you're judging <laughs> yeah it, it's definitely a common reaction but uh more so recently i feel like uh, I've been seeing a lot of people just be like, oh, you're Albanian, like, like, oh, they're passionate people, which we are, you know, I agree 100%. 100%. But like most people will say that they're the most like trustworthy, and loyal people, right? You know, if they tell you they're not going to do something, they're not going to do it. You know, if they, they'll trust you with your life, basically, um, or with their lives, just knowing that you're Albanian. I mean, even Donald Trump, like, I don't know if you knew this, his whole security staff he came out and said that he only hired albanians because they were oh, the really? most i didn't know that yeah so before he was president he would only hire albanian security because he like he said the albanian people were like the most like loyal trustworthy people and he felt more most comfortable around them than like anyone else well there is some positive to it there yeah. you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean often people who don't know us obviously it's once they based on based on movies right uh in, in fairness you know, you got to understand they don't know it. Those who do, you know, if you're from the, you know, East Coast areas, I used to live in New York and Brooklyn, right? Who knew Albanians? They knew Albanians. Uh, you know, the good and the bad that comes with it, of course. Uh, but those who don't know, coming, you know, I live in California, right? Uh, often people don't know, uh, they know what Albania was. They think it's Albany. Yeah, <laughs> yeah New York, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, no, 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 it's Albania. Here is on the map. Let me show you guys. And they're like, oh, cool. I didn't know about it. So it's, it's, that's the exciting part for me. I often I find where I'm presenting something to somebody I have no idea that Albania existed, let alone Skanderbeg. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's what we've experienced too. Is you know going to cigar shops and showing them our cigars. There's like that teaching moment of you know because Albanian history is not super well known across the world, so people get to sit down and learn about this you know this badass guy Skanderbeg and what he did. And, you know, everyone knows the Ottoman Empire, so they hear, oh, Skanderbeg led right. the Albanians against the Ottoman Empire. Like, oh, okay, yeah, so I, I kind of know about that. And, right, you know, right. you usually get great reactions from hearing that, you know, history that most people maybe don't even know. Even, even with Skanderbeg, I think, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure how true it is, right? Because, of course, history is controlled by those who have the power. But, yeah. you yes. know, uh, uh, they say, like, like, the helmet, it was, you know, it was the helmet was... To my understanding, to my research, was gifted from from Italy for the purpose because Scanabet took his army in order to go protect Italy at that time uh, of you know in the 1400s. It was a way for them to gift. You know, if you see the the, the Roman writings uh, in there, something about oh gosh, um, the father and all you know the the, the Christiani side of it. It's written mm. there, and it was given to him for the purpose of saying thank you because because of him. Some some Italians could be speaking French at this point. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. be, you know, and there's a lot of that things that people do not know of how much contribution actually is kind of bad, you know, had done for the surrounding uh, uh, areas. Uh, you know, and it was a it was kind of like a 300 in a sense. Obviously, we're exaggerating it, but like he had a small army. He was very strategic. He learned a lot, you know, fighting for the Ottomans, and that's how he was able to hold back for so many years, you know, an empire like the Persians, right. yeah. in a sense, you know. Uh, so I think there's a lot of beautiful history there that that yeah and I'm, reminds me uh, of Gladiator movie Gladiator that's what it reminds me of often. yeah and I I want to say that uh, either his helmet or his sword is actually in Italy um, in like some museum like I feel like it's in Milan oh. but 
I'm not Aust- sure. I think it's Austria. I think. It's, oh, is it in it's Austria? Austria? Uh, is Austria? Is that any? Sorry, gosh, my my. That's not. Well, that's not. It's, it, no, Austria is a country. Right? Yeah. 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 Right. yeah, yeah. Country wise, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's not in Albania. They're trying to find. They're, they're fighting back to trying to get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not in Italy, or is in Italy? No, I don't think it's in. Is it? Research. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Now, yeah. See, look, now we got to do more research after the podcast, <laughs> but, uh, um, you could be right. You could be right. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, uh, you're right. I mean, they should bring it back, but I'm kind of glad for the moment they're holding it up because, you know, I think we're learning how to save things in Albania. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah. We're, we're not, we're not quite there yet. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we're, we're getting there. We, we are, you know, we're modernizing a lot of things and I'm happy we're moving forward with a lot of things. Uh, so yeah. And listen, I know that you got to get going here soon. So yes. uh, the final question would be, you know, what is some advice that you have for other people that want to be entrepreneurs like you start a business, whether it's an Albanian business or a business that they're passionate about? You know, what's like one piece of advice that you would like to give these people? Uh, I mean, I think this is something that everybody says. You got to start with at least, are you in love with what you want to do? Mm-hmm. I think that's I think that's very something, and after that follows with, you got to be consistent, meaning, you can't give up because it's very easy to give up. That's that's the truth. You you run you run into roadblocks and you're just like, oh, gosh, all right, I can't do this. Right, you gotta push. You literally have to push, mm-hmm. even after you build it. You you, ha- you know I think that's one thing that I found tiring was that you got to be consistent, promoting it, talk to people, conversate, you know, and. I think that's the next step of, you know, as often as you guys do, you you know, often you are promoting your product, you know, you're going, you're going to cigar shops, uh, you're talking about, you're doing those events. And I think that's the second most important part after you build a product where mm-hmm. you have to be on top of it. Yeah. You cannot take a break and be like, all right, I'll be back in a month. Nope. You got to continue. So uh, you got to love it and then you got to stay on top of it. Otherwise, you, you know, you're going to fall behind. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. And I think, yeah, it all ties back to, you know, if you're passionate about it, it's easier to, you know, make a great product. Like you said, you know, you wanted to put as much detail as you can to the product. And like with the cigars, you know, wake up in the middle of the night and try and, you know, think of something new to do to make it better. So, you know, the passion is what drives you. And then as long as you stay consistent and right. keep chasing it, yeah, I mean, you're going to be very successful in whatever it is that you're doing. And listen to your customers. They're, they're your best surveys. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Just hear what they got to say, even the worst. You don't want to hear the best. Sometimes you just want to hear what could be better. Exactly. Uh, I tell people all the gotta, time, you need to talk more crap because, I mean, like, <laughs> it's all this good stuff. I want someone to talk trash once. <laughs> no, it is. It is helpful. That's, that's free advice. Yeah, exactly. As opposed to going out there having to pay people to take your survey and ask questions, right? Uh, I think that's your customers are your best, your best uh, reviewers. Hopefully they don't write that on uh, on Yelp. Exactly, not public business, reviews. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Reach out to me directly so, yeah. and tell me, yeah. <laughs> but listen, Arbor, I, I really appreciate you for coming on and sharing your story uh, and sharing this beautiful product. Uh, and and we're going to uh, you know, send us the links and stuff so wherever you can find it, we'll put it in the description for all the viewers to go find it. Uh, but you know, once again, thanks for coming on. Thanks for talking with us. It's been great. And, uh, you know, yeah. we'll keep in touch. And, you know, like you said, maybe we'll work together in the future and be able to put Thank, out some yeah. sort of package or something. Thank you so much for allowing me to be on your platform, uh, which is, you know, it's more than I, you know, I, I, I could do it. Honestly, you guys are doing a great job and I appreciate, you know, giving me an opportunity to join your guys' uh, world as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Course, thank yeah. you. So, thank you. Have a good day, guys. All See right. You, you too, my friend. All right. Later. Bye. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below. And now, a final word from our sponsors. San Antonio Travel Humidor. Nice uh, velvety bag. Here's the bag. We got the light brown color. Open her up. Look at that. It's got four slots right here for your cigars. Comes with a cutter. You can never have too many cutters. And a San Antonio lighter. Oh, this is kind of cool. I think that's cool. So 
Soft flame, torch. You got your cigars and you got your terminator lighter and your cutter. You're basically ready to go. This is a solid case. So I'm a fan of this. I really like this. This is going to be my new travel humidor. Link is going to be right here. Sorry, can't put it in the description. YouTube sucks. But check them out. 